everybody, it's Val. Hey everybody, it's Michelle. Welcome to the Wind Down. From the Wind Down TV. Come on, y'all. Hey everybody, welcome to another fabulous episode of the Wind Down from the Wind Down TV. Now check this out. Today we are talking with this lady right here, Miss Mama, Mrs. Sorry, Lama Laufer, who is an um, importer from NLCWines.com. And she is responsible for what we are drinking today. A little jackpot. This thing is delicious. We're going to get into that. But before we do, you may notice that our girl Belle is not here. Unfortunately, she's feeling a little under the weather. So we're going to send her big hugs and kisses so that she gets well soon. And she can be back to drinking with us. But thank you, Nama, for joining me. So I'm not drinking by myself and feeling like, you know, thank you. (laughs) Welcome, Nama. (laughs) <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, drinking. I mean, you know, we should all be comfortable drinking by ourselves um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. if that need arises, but it's yeah. a huge answer to be able to drink um, and enjoy wines with somebody else. That's right. <laughs> I agree. And especially, the, well, let me just go ahead and say, I don't know if I want to be sharing jackpot with other people, but, you know, anything else, cool. I kind of like it. Wine. It's a something. Wine. Okay, all right, fine. Okay, fine. <laughs> So can you tell us why you are passionate about Portuguese wine? Yes, I can tell you all about Portuguese wine. So, we, um, so NLC Wines is, is a company that my husband and I um, created about 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. And uh, my husband is the Portuguese part of the business. I'm the okay. infiltrated, as I like calling it, part of the business. Um, yeah. Although I have um, lived in lots of Portuguese uh, speaking countries and, and speak Portuguese. So at home we speak uh, Portuguese. Um, we decided to create a company that was going to be bringing in wines that we were enjoying, but that we were not seeing here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. market. Mm -hmm. Um, And so little by little, we've been kind of building our portfolio um, and we we kind of have a very, very specific focus, um, which I think for a lot of people would say, you're crazy, you're so niche. Um, But in fact, it works for us because I think that when you jump, into any kind of venture, any kind of business. It has to be something that you love and that you're passionate about. Um, and in our case, um, we want to drink our wine like we eat our food. So um, we work with family estates. Uh, we work with um, producers that are focused on sustainability um, in their in their vineyards. Uh, we work with um, producers who operate under um, a set of norms of farming um, that the EU, the European Union has set forth, which is called integrated production. So the the idea of this is to kind of pretty much work with the land, with your environment as much as possible. Um, We also only work with indigenous Portuguese grapes and there are over 250 of them. So if you haven't heard of these names, don't fret. Um, A lot of people haven't. But that's a little bit what we're doing. So we are pushing, you know, indigenous grapes from Portugal that are over 250 plus of them. Um, We're working with family states. We're working with young, dynamic, interesting producers just as much as we're working with some fantastic old school uh, producers who have been kind of um, making sure that the style of Portuguese wine can can keep um, going for some time. And and then we brought all of that here to the U.S. Mm -hmm. Um, and so right now um, we work um, here in New York and then we're, we actually distribute in about um, nine other states as well. Okay. And one of the things that we um, are focused on doing is finding those gems that are going to be on our dinner table. Yeah. Um, and, and that's kind of what we started doing. And so there's absolutely no wine um, of any of our wines that we bring that is not a wine that we ourselves enjoy um, at home. Yeah. Right. So tell me about the climate and the tour. So just, just okay, first of all, I always mess that word up. So I'm gonna get back to that in a second. But, tell me. Um, but tell me about, uh, we. oh, so we did a tasting with Nama like a few months ago and fell in love with her, her energy, her wine, everything. Like um, just, I think she's an awesome lady as you can already tell people, you know? <laughs> so um, she knows all about like the climate and the tour. I was like, gosh. I want to get inside her brain. There's you know what I mean? Mentioned this this brain. So much. <laughs> you know, sometimes I start talking to people and I, some, there are a couple, there are, there are like different variations. Sometimes I see them like, I see nothing. And I'm like, oh my yeah. gosh, I took it too far. And then other times I have to ask, is this okay? Am I going yeah. into deep? Am I good? Yeah. Um, there's a lot of information in my brain. But um, 
Portugal is an interesting country. So we're going to focus a little, we're going to zero in here on um, the area of Lisbon, because this is where Jackpot's okay. from, up on the hill okay. of Lisbon. Okay. But overall, Portugal is a very small country. You can pretty much drive from the north to the south in a day. Wow. Um, okay. But ideally, you want to spend a few more days. And by mm -hmm. the way, Portugal is opening up this summer, as some have heard that the European Union um, is allowing vaccinated Americans to travel into Europe this summer. So oh um, hopefully gosh. Portugal <laughs> yeah. has to get those tourists back up yeah. and running. But so from the north to the south, small country. Um, interestingly enough, um, it has a gazillion of microclimates. So microclimates okay. are um, uh, smaller areas where for some reason or another, you have a climate that is maybe not typical of uh, the country as a whole during that season. And yeah. usually that has to do with um, geographic, um, mm -hmm. uh, like a topography. So um, there are areas that have hills. So the more right. you have hills, you know, the wind is blocked. Um, there are areas that have big rivers. Um, the moment you have more uh, water, more fertile ground, you have another situation of, of microclimate. Right. Um, right. And so in Lisbon, um, we have two very interesting things happening. Lisbon itself is at sea level, but mm -hmm. part of Lisbon is also in a little bit higher altitude. Um, mm -hmm. And so you have two different types of regions within Lisbon for winemaking. You have pretty much sea level and higher altitude. Okay. Um, this is from higher altitude Lisbon, which okay. is very, very cool. And why this is cool that it's higher altitude is that the moment that the vineyards are planted a little higher in altitude, mm -hmm. the wine is fresher. It's so much fresher. Uh, okay. When the vines are planted lower on sea level, they are getting slammed by the sun. And by uh -huh. getting slammed by the sun with it, without enough breeze or without enough freshness, especially at night when the temperature drops, mm -hmm. then you end up having um, uh, wines that taste kind of like over-ripened fruit. You okay, know, like okay. Super, super juicy, um, but um, more so than juicy, almost like, um, um, yeah, like over-ripened fruit. Yeah. And so here, having the vineyards planted with a little bit more altitude, we get much more freshness. So that's one okay. thing, which is very cool. Okay. The second thing, which is fantastic about almost like half of Portugal, is that Portugal borders the Atlantic Ocean. Ta-da! And okay. so by bordering the Atlantic Ocean, you have half of Portugal, pretty much. All of the half of winemaking side of Portugal that's Atlantic, which yeah. has a maritime influence. Okay, am I making sense so far? Making perfect sense. Let me ask you real quick, does this affect, does it, Mistral, I keep hearing this word Mistral, does that affect Portugal anywhere? No, that's a different kind of thing, right? Yeah. Mistral win? Completely yeah, different. Yeah, no, that's, so this, this, this the, 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 what's coming in from the ocean is yeah. the Atlantic breeze. Yeah. Um, that is affecting also how well in altitude the vines, the vines get a lot of wind that pass through okay. the grapes. Okay. And so they don't get um, over ripened. Yeah. Okay. Got it. So that's important. That the wind, the the breeze is very important. Interestingly enough, along with that breeze comes like a salinity as well. Uh huh. Uh huh. And so this wine, it's very, it's kind of a cool wine because this is one of those wines. I mean, we can talk a little bit more about it. It is just so fun. It it's fun. It's easy. It's fresh. It's juicy. But yep. it has a little interesting salty kick here and at first when we first tasted it, we're like this is this, this almost seems off for this wine because it's not something that you pick up at first like you kind of have to you know halfway down the bottle you'll you'll pick up that saline um yeah. the more salinity mm. but it makes this wine a little different because it almost gives like the an extra bit of like salivating in your mouth um mm -hmm. which although has to do with tannins so right. all, yeah. all grapes have tannins. It exists on the on the skin of the grapes and the seed of the grape. That's where the tannins yeah. exist. Most wines will have um, a tannins. This wine is not a tannic wine, but it does have that salinity. Um, it definitely has some nice tannins um, from the grapes. But yeah. the salinity, again, is kind of the third thing that contributes to this wine. So we have altitude, we have fresh ocean breeze, and then we have the fact that it's right next to the ocean and we get some salinity in here too. Oh. The jackpot, I felt from the very beginning that it's just like one of those wines that I that, that are so easy. Yes. Um, yes. But that have everything that are easy, but are super fresh, yummy fruit. Um, you can have it with food, you can have it without. It's like, it's, it's, a, it's just, it just does its thing. 
and it does all the things. It covers the whole gamut of just everything. <laughs> Love a glass of wine. I always tell people <laughs> when when you're kind of going through the wine education side of things, mm -hmm. eat a very diversified diet. Like yeah. try checking out as many like different recipes as you can. Okay. And if you get there's a great place in New York called Calustians okay. in Manhattan. Uh -huh. It's on. It's in Curry Hill. It's on like West. I think it's West Twenty uh, West East Twenty Seventh and and Lexington. Calustian. Calustian. So it is an Indian um, shop that okay. has a gazillion condiments, spices, everything. Oh, okay. Uh huh. Go if you're near. If yeah. Go. It's a, it's a whole Calusian. like it's an experience. It's, you have like it's a mecca of, okay. of incredible spices. But it's a great place sometimes when you're tasting wine because there are so many subtle flavors in wine. Yeah. Um, yeah. And sometimes just yeah. having a very uh, wide repertoire of things that you've smelled or tasted 